Hi, this is Paolo from the MB Academy. And in today's video, I am going to be showing you how to make bases like the ones in the track I Got You by ShyFX, Breakage and Break. So this is the original track. This is the song we're gonna be making. And this is my recreation. Now I know it's not exactly the same sound, but it does share a lot of similarities with your original. And if you stick till the end, you will learn all the principles that create sounds like this. And I'll even show you how to create something of your own. But before you get started, make sure you get subscribed to the channel and hit the notification bell to not miss any for future videos. And if you want to support the channel, consider grabbing one of our products at dmbacademy.com. We have crazy preset packs. We have producer bundles made by pro artists like Icicle, Current Value, Avis, Mastic, and many more showing you how to make tracks from start to finish with all project files, presets, samples, etc. included. And speaking about samples and presets, if you want the ones from this video, consider joining Preset Pass. The link is also in the description. So with all that being said, let's get into the video. Okay, so this sound is made in two layers. This is the first layer and this is the second layer. So let's explore both. Starting with the first layer, this is what it sounds like. So here I have an initial list patch holding it low D0. And what we're going to do is we're going to load sine waves on each oscillator, including the sub and noise. The reason why we're doing this is because we want to fine tune these oscillators to the harmonics that create the sound. So that will be two octaves and four semitones on oscillator A, that harmonic, and three octaves and 11 semitones on B. Now you might be wondering, where do all of these random numbers come? And good question. So here's the answer. When we take a look at the sound, we pay attention to its harmonics. Here we can notice a big harmonic on the low end, which will be the sub, which also is the fundamental harmonic of the sound. And if we pay attention, we can see that that one, as EQH shows in this corner, is actually D0. So that's the reason why we're holding D0. Now, where does two octaves plus four and three octaves plus 11 come from? It comes from this harmonic right here, which is F sharp. And F sharp, if I'm not mistaken, you can count it. It's two octaves and four semitones above D0. So that will make a total of 28 semitones. And if you want to think about it in terms of harmony, four semitones above the fundamental create a major third. And we're playing that two octaves above. So we're actually playing a chord, kind of like the start of a chord actually. And the three octaves and 11 semitones harmonic, it's one that I decided to add when I was in a fine tuning stage on the sound. So I'm gonna turn off B for now, and I'm going to use the sub, which will be the fundamental, plus that very noticeable harmonic. And I'm going to replicate the movement of it, which was going progressively up. So in the original sound, we kind of have a rising shape in that harmonic going up and then down. Cool. We can create a similar LFO for the noise, also going up and then down. And when we distort the sound, since tube distortion, it's a harmonic distortion, meaning that the frequencies that it creates belong to the harmonic series of whatever the fundamental it is that you're playing, we will generate harmonics inside the series of what the sound should be when you mix the fundamental and this upper harmonic. Then I decided to add this third one as one extra layer for the sound. So on this one, I have mapped the same LFO as the noise. As you can see, it adds something extra to the sound. Nice. So after that, I added a multiband compressor boosted the gain. And from here, you can start fine tuning your sound. The next thing was just a short reverb. But I don't recommend you to do this on your main bass. The reason why I did this reverb is just for demonstrational purposes, uh, which would be to make it sound uh, not so digital or at least a little bit in context for the track. So you can skip the reverb or you can add it way later in the chain as a parallel layer. Uh, so no one in the comments is telling me about me putting reverb on the sub. <laughs> so, okay, from here you can fine tune the layers, meaning that 
the amount of each harmonic before the distortion is going to influence the final timbre of the sound. So if I bring more sub or less sub, as you can see, we'll get a different sound. If I bring less of the first harmonic, we'll get a different sound. If I bring more of this harmonic, we'll get a different sound. And now it's about finding a balance. So here you can spend as much time as you need to in order to create your own sound. And here's where you can pivot from creating a sound that sounds exactly like shy effects, breakage and break, which they already did this. You can now create something that is original. So I highly recommend you that if you've watched the video and if you've paid attention so far and you understand these principles, pivot right here and create your own sound. Cool. If you want to follow along to practice, let's continue with the recreation. So the exact values of this recreation were 77 on this first LFO, 38 on this LFO, 11 on the noise LFO. And in terms of levels, I have 25 for the sub, 0% on both oscillators, and for the distortion, I have exactly 75%. So this is the sound I should be getting. Cool. As you can see, it's not exactly the same sound as the original, but it does share a lot of harmonics with it. All right. So from here, I'm going to take you to the post processing. So the first element of post processing that I added was a trash instance. And this trash is set on multiband. We have a split of three bands, 20 to 120. That's the low band, 120 to 2000 and 2000 till 20K. So here we can see how there's no special distortion mode. I only boosted the highs. Without this, it'll sound like this. Now with this, you can see the extra boost on the highs. There's nothing on the mids and there's nothing on the lows. That is it. It's just a simple saturation of the highs. Next thing. So the next thing that I did was separating my channel into dry and wet signals. And on the wet signal, let's hear it. I have a highly distorted version of the sound. So I'm going to deactivate all of these effects. You can see we have the same sound. In fact, the dry signal, it's that original sound. And then this wet signal has a combination of the EQ like this. I'll tell you why I made these tweaks and then this trash too. So, okay. If we have the EQ, this sounds like this. If I don't have it, it sounds like this. So the reason why I made these cuts is because whatever you feed into a saturator, it's going to generate harmonics based on that input signal. So as you can see, I cut it, this very significant harmonic and some of the sub. That results, and also I boosted some of the highs. That results that after you feed it through trash will result in a big boost or big lots or a lot of distortion in the highs of the sound. Before, after. So now if you pay attention so far in the video, you will learn a very valuable lesson, which is knowing the importance of the EQ before the distortion. So now you can go to that track where you put uh, some EQing before the saturation of your kick and put it after, or maybe be a little bit more mindful of the boost or cuts that you made before distortion. Very cool lesson to take. Next thing is I just high passed everything so I can add it as a parallel layer to the main dry signal. And then I automated its level to be shorter. So without it, full tail. Without it, it's a little bit shorter. That layer with the dry signal creates the sound. Without it, with it, lots of cool noise. So that is it for the first layer. Now I'm going to walk you very fast through the second layer. So the second layer ends up being more of the same sound. We have 2 plus 4 and 3 plus 11. But the difference is that I created a different movement for oscillator A. I created a different movement for oscillator B. And I changed the distortion for a soft clip. Plus, I added this filter at the end. And here, indeed, I added a little bit of reverb. Now, here we have the sub. Here we have oscillator A plus B, the noise. And this is the sound you should be getting. If you were to have two distortion, that's how you would compare it against the uh, other layer. But in this case, I added self-clipping. 
And the reason why I added soft clipping is because I wanted the purest form of this harmonics so I can then distort it through trash too. So I'm going to get into that next. So here I have the same dynamic. We can see a dry signal and a wet signal. We can see the EQ before the trash. Here's the trash. It's the preset amp drainer. Before, after, not a lot of difference. And then we can see the EQing that I made. I high pass the bass, applied a volume envelope to it. And next we have a trash. Now this trash, we can see same setup. Probably I only boosted the highs. We can see it right there. No mids, no lows. All right. Next effects. Here we have an EQ boosting this 1K area. And at the end, we have a very intense analog clip saturator with 22 of drive and minus 16 of output to not blow your ears. And if we play these two sounds, that's what we have. So that's how you make basses like Shy FX, Breakage, and Break in the track I Got You. I hope you learned some very useful lessons on the way here. And if you did, consider supporting the MB Academy. This helps us create many more of these videos and bring you the best educational resources for drum and bass. We make our free stuff better than other people's paid stuff. We have producer bundles with huge artists like Matzo, Icicle, Current Value, Mastic, Cove, and many more. We also have the best preset packs for Serum and Vital. We also have the best preset bundles that you can use to build your tracks with high quality sound design. And if you want to get access to the presets and project files from this video, consider becoming a member of Preset Pass. The link is in the description below. So thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a nice day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.